This is Kilo Charlie 9 Victor, Kilo Victor, calling CQ, 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 CQ. Kilo Charlie 9 Victor, Kilo Victor, calling CQ on 7187. Alpha Baker 4, Juliet Yankee. Uh, here is a Alpha Baker 4, Juliet uh, Yankee, I believe it was, that correct? Yeah, Roger, Roger. Alpha Bravo 4, Japan Yankee. My name is Glenn, and I'm located in the state of Virginia. How are you doing today? Roger, Roger, Glenn. Doing uh, real well. <laughs> Trying to uh, fight these conditions uh, somewhat. Uh, what did you uh, say your location was? I'm in Bedford, Virginia. Bravo Echo Delta, Foxtrot Oscar, Romeo Delta, Virginia. Halfway between Roanoke and Lynchburg. Yes, sir. Oh, Roger that, Roger that. Well, you're uh, making the trip there. That's uh, <laughs> that's outstanding for this morning uh, as uh, conditions kind of drop in and out. Uh, I guess uh, I'm uh, fading in and out to you, Roger. Not too bad, actually. I was watching you on the scope, and you were one of the strongest, uh, strongest signals there. In fact, right beside of us is basically nothing, and the guy you were trying to talk to before me, uh, I, I could not, he didn't even make a pip on my screen, so... It, the band is really goofy this morning, so it's uh, either strong ones or nothing at all. Uh, I'm running ICOM 7610 here. I'm poking about 300 watts right now, so uh, uh, we're doing okay. Back to you, AB4JY. Oh, Roger, the end of that uh, was, uh, oh, gosh, I, I would have to guesstimate it at 20 over. Uh, I don't run my uh, S meter like most folks. Uh, I've got my uh, audio gain and my uh, RF gain tied together and I bring them up uh, as needed uh, together and uh, that way uh, I'm not uh, running my front end into uh, AGC compression. Uh, we have a, a QSO vlog page on YouTube and uh, we do a lot of uh, QSO recording. Matter of fact I'm recording at this moment and uh, I'm uh, you know a, a kind of an audio purist uh, try to get the best signal recorded possible so uh, my stuff is all direct uh, as opposed to a lot of the stuff posted on YouTube, they're just using a microphone in the room, and they got more of their room discoloration in the um, in the signal than they do the actual signal coming in. So um, our stuff is pretty straight, and uh, in t you know straight into the mixer, and uh, we pay particular attention to. Uh, keeping that uh, front end uh, RF uh, saturation down so it's not trying to suck up white noise between words and stuff, Roger? Yeah, Roger, Roger. And while you're mentioning that, uh, do you hear my amplifier? Uh, is it intrusive? Uh, I heard a, had a guy made a, make a mention of it the other day. I'd never heard anyone say anything about it before because it's pretty darn quiet. AB4JY. In, in an acoustical manner or an electrical manner? In an acoustical manner. No, sir, I don't hear it at all. Uh, of course, I do have a little noise, but, uh, you know, if it were anything pronounced, uh, your your voice is uh, 20 dB over that background noise. Okay, good. I've never heard anyone to mention it to me before. I've got a, a solid-state linear. It's about uh, probably three and a half feet away. It's right in my reach uh, away from the microphone, so uh, I just didn't want to have anything as intrusive. I can always do something about that. I... I can do some acoustic work for that. I used to do some of that. So anyway, once again, the name's Glenn. I'm in Bedford, Virginia, where we've got 48 degrees and overcast. Uh, had a little sprinkling rain this morning, and uh, I think we're probably going to get some showers off and on all, uh, all day long. So uh, back to you, AB4JY. Roger, Roger, Glenn. I've got about uh, six blowers, about six blowers in arm's length, and uh, the deal there is... Uh, to get you a, a, well, you don't have the problem, so you, you don't have to do anything, but uh, I just use a, a foam uh, a windscreen and uh, work uh, right, on the, uh, right on the microphone, uh, tailor the EQ as to not be uh, muddy, and, uh, you know, when you're right up on the mic, you have a, a good lead over any uh, background noise, Roger. Yeah, understood. Uh, this microphone I'm using has got side ports in it, so uh, I do not talk directly into the, the front of it. It's an older ICOM 7 SM8. SM8, I'm sorry, I'm babbling. Uh, and I've kept it because uh, I, I run it. It's got two, uh, two uh, ports on it, so I can run two radios off it just for flipping the switch back and forth. And I really like it. I've had it for a long, long time. 
Anyway, uh, I didn't get your name there, uh, AC9 DKV, AB4JY. Roger Glenn, the name here is Jim, uh, Julie at India Mike, and uh, we are located uh, near Louisville, Kentucky, uh, just across the river from Louisville in uh, Indiana. And, uh, yeah, microphones, uh, you know, that's the beginning of the... Uh, of the signal there and um, my system is a uh, homebrew uh, condenser microphone feeding an art preamp uh, through a, uh, a third octave equalizer in back of that up to a six position rotary switch for uh, radio selection and then a, a toggle on toggle off switch from there uh, into the uh, 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 Yezu 990 from the Yezu 990 into uh, the SB220 and then uh, on this uh, frequency I'm using an inverted V at about uh, 35 to 40 feet at the feed point there and uh, we uh, have uh, developed a really unique I think uh, a tuning system for uh, inverted V's in that we do the um, SWR adjustment on the uh, negative side or on the ground side and the uh, moving it on frequency part on the high side of the dipole and we keep going back and forth and back and forth until uh, this, I've got to three, I've got a 40, 20, and a 15 up there that are all running about 1.01 to 1. Well, that sounds good. It's kind of novel. I've never, I've never thought of that before. I, it's uh, totally something I, I would like to try to play with because, I mean, I, I do that. I, I do a lot of measuring and I have a lot of, I've got a lot of stuff here that I, uh, either uh, professionally or experimentally, either for things from DC to light almost. And so that, that's an interesting uh, concept. I might try that because I've got it. I'm talking into a uh, a 40 meter dipole, slightly inverted. Uh, I guess you would probably call it a V because it's uh, I don't know how many degrees down it is on the end, but it's at about the apex is probably at around 55 feet. I would say it's uh, kind of snuggled up about eight feet below uh, my beam on a powerful. So it seems to be doing pretty good. By the way, year 10 over 9 that time, beautiful signal in here. Great audio quality, just a beautiful signal. AB4J1. Roger, Roger, appreciate that. Yeah, I think that the secret about inverted Vs, particularly when they're uh, hung off towers, is to stay uh, two or three feet off the tower, away from the tower at your uh, feed point. You know, get you a rope or something and tie your insulator uh, so you can, uh, you know, uh, pull it away from the tower and then put your transmission line down that rope. Uh, and uh, then uh, the the, um, the tower doesn't interfere with uh, tuning, you know, and everything is really a lot easier to do. I, I tried some that uh, I, you know, brought the, uh, the uh, transmission line uh, connection right up against the tower and didn't work uh, all that well. But when you do that uh, tuning with the uh, negative side as SWR and the high side as uh, the on the frequency part, uh, you will wind up with the uh, high side probably being about uh, maybe 15% uh, longer than a, a actual absolute balance between the two, but the thing is that your SWR on your target frequency is almost non-existent, Roger. Roger, Roger. Makes sense. It really does. That's, that's something I might take a look at because I'm going to... Now this might make it a little more complicated, but I think I'm going to put a 75-meter uh, uh, dipole in fan fit configuration onto this same... Uh, uh, I got the ballon right there at the. In fact, uh, yeah, I'm using the ballon, not a choke ballon, on this one. I think I'm going to try to see if I can tune a 75 meter fan dipole. Now, that probably would make the whole deal a little bit crazier to get at. But uh, you know, come warm weather, well, I got a lot of time to <laughs> to play with stuff, and so won't hurt anything to try it. I got the. Actually, I'm on. A, I'm not on a power. I have a 65 foot powerful uh, utility pole. Uh, that I, my rotor is my remote rotor motor is mounted at about four feet above ground level, and I mechanically drive it up with uh, with pipe all the way up to a couple of thrust bearings to hold hold the uh, piece of weight off of the of the beams and all the. Uh, I've got a six meter and a two meter four forty stack, and plus the HF beam up there. So that keeps me having to uh, when the uh, rotor starts giving some problem, I don't have to climb the tower or, or get a bucket truck. And, 
go there. That's going to that's going to real God soon. I've had to change the rotor out of call work on the rotor two or three times since I've had this set up, but never a problem with anything up there on the tower. Anyway, I'll give that some thought about the uh, uh, the fifteen percent, and uh, I've got powers. I mean, uh, guys. Uh, pulleys and things where I can raise and lower my dipoles very easily, so changing them around is not a real issue. Back to you, AB4JY. Roger. Now, I did hear your uh, background just a little bit uh, from time to time when you when you really got to about 40 over. <laughs> uh, but uh, your your audio is uh, 20 decibels over your background noise, so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't worry about it. If, you know, the thing would be if you wanted to improve that uh, noise ratio, uh, just uh, like I say, get you a windscreen, uh, put it over your mic, come up on mic, back your audio down, and uh, then you'll have your uh, you know, background at uh, 30 dB below uh, uh, your voice peaks. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, you know, if you're looking at your RF output as you're talking uh, and your normal level is uh, somewhat, uh, you know, like two-thirds uh, deflection on the meter on sideband, uh, uh, if, how much background noise shows up as uh, uh, a resting uh, signal you know, if you just uh, key it and don't say anything, uh, how far up does the uh, uh, RF uh, watt meter go, you know? And if it's, you know, just sitting there down at the bottom, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch up or an eighth of an inch up, uh, I wouldn't worry about it, Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. I don't, uh, hold on. This is a brand new radio, and I don't know all there is to know about it yet, but... Uh, it shows like nothing on the power output meter. There's no there's no modulation occurring at that low level of that fan. So uh, I have not yet calibrated, or I'm not certain how this uh, output scope, audio scope, is calibrated. But I need to do a little work on that. It does show my voice down on the lower end. Uh, most of my voice is one kilohertz or below. So uh, there you are. But again, I don't uh, I don't really know the calibration. Yeah, that's something. I'm, in fact, I've actually worked with my hand. I've worked with the radio a couple of months, and so there's a lot of lot of complicated things going on here. Back to you, AB4JY. Roger, Roger. Well, you know, like I say, the uh, RF watt meter is the final determiner there. If you if you're not getting any residual uh, modulation on it between words, or if you stop and and uh, look at it, uh, then uh, you know, say la vie. It's it's when you might. Uh, get a you know uh, halfway up or something then you you're getting some blower uh, residual quite a bit of blower residual in the audio you know but if you can't see much uh, on the output then uh, I, I wouldn't worry about it you yeah, the balance uh, the tonality balance of your microphone is just ideal you know it's a good good uh, equalization sound Roger yeah Roger and thanks for that that was I had comments over the years of me using this mic I think all audio quality is really, really good on it. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, it's exactly the way it came out of the box many, many years ago. So when it's, when it's, uh, when it's right, I don't mess with things. Like I said, I've got all kinds of things around here to measure stuff with, but uh, it's, all, it's all in the uh, in the ear of the guy you're chatting with. And uh, when it sounds good to my audience, then that's all I'm looking for. Hey, listen, Jim, I don't have to go on. I've got uh, my uh, guy that keeps uh, I want some rental property. And the guy that uh, takes care of my my grounds and my mowing and all that stuff is trying to get a hold of me. So I'm going to have to take off from here. I'll give you back. I'll say seven three now. I apologize for jumping out so abruptly, but with that great signal you got, you still you still ten over nine by the way. Great signal you find somebody else on the base. Take care of yourself, and I really enjoyed the chat. Let's go again another day, and uh, we'll just have a great day. Uh, AB four JY, I'll be clear in your part. Roger, Roger, Glenn. Uh, and like I say, I do have a QSO vlog page, and I will be uh, posting our uh, QSO uh, up on that page uh, probably tomorrow or uh, uh, the next day. If you go to uh, YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to the uh, QSO vlog page. And right at the top of the page, there's one that has about 140 uh, QSOs in it. And if you open that one, then uh, this one uh, should be uh, right towards the top of the list, right under Art Bell. So uh, three's there, uh, uh, and we really appreciate the QSO, Glenn. Have a good day. Uh, this is Casey 9 vkv Claire. 
Okay, Jim, I'll take a look at 8401.